Again, my name is Kevin Patterson, CEO of Connect for Health Colorado. Uh, we have the joy and honor and privilege of honoring Dr. Justina Ford uh, with the mural that's behind us. And what I wanted to do today is just have a little bit of a celebration so that we can uh, recognize the work that she's done, but also so many of the lives that she's touched, many of them that are, are here with us today. So very quickly, we'll just have a quick run of, run of show here, let everybody go through. We'll, we'll keep our comments brief because we don't want everybody to get hoarse by, by the time we're done. Uh, and then we'll have a, a nice little uh, ribbon cutting and take a picture with the Ford baby so we can put, a, put something into the museum that, to commemorate what we're doing here today. So uh, very quickly, let me go ahead and bring up Councilwoman C. DeBaca, whose district we are in. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a beautiful day in District 9. We say, I see a lot of black and brown faces amongst us, and amongst our own, we say every day is black history. So it sounds a little cliche to say that today in Five Points and every day in Five Points is a black history month for us. And so today it's super important for us more than ever to be reclaiming our history and legacy and places in these communities where we really laid the foundation for what they have become. And so I'm honored to be here to welcome you all to meet the babies that Dr. Justina Ford delivered and really lift up her legacy and make sure that we're building on it. And that's what I'm committed to do as your councilwoman for this district. So thank you and enjoy right. the rest of the show. Thank you, Councilwoman Cedar Bach. It's a pleasure to have you here, and or actually be in your district. Yes. Let me turn that around. Welcome uh, to my <laughs> I'm, I'm with that. Uh, I, very quickly, I, I did want to bring up uh, Mayor Michael Hancock. He was not expecting to speak. Uh, that's until I talked to him. Uh, and so I wanted to make sure I at least gave him an opportunity to come to the podium and say hello to everybody. Try, the try, try the everybody. Mic. They're saying try the mic, Mike. See if this microphone. No, there we go. Nah. See? Yeah. How's everybody doing? I want to thank you all for being here, and I know we have a lot of Justina Ford babies who are in the house. Make some noise if you're here. We are so excited to be here because I think, unfortunately, oftentimes we forget about all the people whose shoulders we stand on to bring us to this moment. If you think about Dr. Justina Ford, she had several strikes against her. One, she was a woman. Two, she was black. And third, she chose a, an unusual profession for someone who was a woman in black at the time. But yet, she persevered to the point that today we celebrate what over 70,000 children that she birthed. Was it seven? Let's, let's make it 70,000. Where, 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 where is, uh, where, 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 the, I was watching it on TV and I thought I was blown away by 7,000. 7,000 children! that she brought into this world. And I know, and it's having some of them here today, it's just a phenomenal feat. And so I wanna thank all the partners for being here. And Kevin gave me permission to do something that we were gonna do in just a, about a month from now. I have a committee in my office and Mary Louise, my wife and I decided several years ago that we would start honoring the men and women, the people who made Denver and Colorado so very special. And we started bringing together groups of Asian and women, African Americans and Latinos, we wanted to celebrate the gems, the diamonds, the jewels, the pearls of our community. Folks who have, who have paid the price for all of us. And we started, we started issuing them Denver's highest honor, our gold coin. And last month, my committee came to me and said, we need to honor Justina Ford, Dr. Justina Ford posthumously. And so I thought, what better day than today for us to present. So I'm gonna ask Daphne Rice Allen to come up here. Yeah! And let's present the city's gold coin to Dr. For, for the tremendous difference she's made in the life of our community. Daphne right, Allen Rice is the chair of the African American Heritage Museum here in Denver. We thank you and we hope you will display this in honor of Dr. Justina Ford. You, you bet. Thank you. Thank you all. God bless you.
Wow, thank you, thank you. Greetings from the Board of Directors, of Advisory Board, and many of the volunteers of the Black American West Museum and Heritage Center. We wanna thank everyone for coming out and supporting this very special dedication to Dr. Justina Lorena Ford. We wanna give special thanks to Max Sansing, the artist, Kevin Patterson, CEO of Connect for Health, and U.S. Bank for being sponsors. And to also thank Susan Burks, Giselle Davis, who pulled this event together. If I've missed someone, I do apologize. I again am Daphne Rice Allen, Chair of the Board of Directors at the Black American West Museum and Heritage Center. It is, <laughs> it is an honor and a, a pleasure for the museum to be part of history. The museum's motto is we tell it like it was. The, muse the story of Dr. Ford is amazing. Born Justina Louina Warren in 1871 in Knoxville, Illinois, served several years after the Civil War. She was one of many children and often accompanied her mother, a nurse who she tended to her patients. In 1892, Justina married John Ford, a Baptist minister, and subsequently moved to Chicago, where she graduated from Herring Medical College in 1899. Justina worked uh, briefly at, at an Alabama hospital before relocating to Denver in 1902 with her husband, Reverend Ford, who who was called to Denver by Zion Baptist Church. Once here in Colorado, she was given her medical license from an examiner who said, as Mayor Hancock pointed out, I don't wanna take your money. You, are, you have two strikes against you. You are a woman and you are colored. The Colorado Census records in 1910 to 1930, she showed that Dr. Ford was Denver's first African-American female physician. Even after, <laughs> even after receiving her license, area hospitals still continued to deny her and her patients access to their facilities. Because she did not have hospital privileges, Dr. Ford specialized in general medicine and treated people either in their homes or in her home, which was originally at 2335 Arapahoe Street. In a personal letter, she estimates that she delivered over 7,000 babies and learned seven to 10 different languages, enabling her to communicate with her patients in their native languages. Dr. Ford practiced from 1902 till her death in 1952. She was widely known to patients of every race and every religion. It, is, it takes an enormous effort to keep the Black American West Museum and Heritage Center in the home of the late Dr. Ford now at 3091 California running. This is a perfect time to let everyone know how hard all the volunteers are working to keep this museum functioning and structurally sound. During the museum's 49 years, for the past six years, the museum has operated without any paid staff. Everyone who volunteers at the museum is passionate and dedicated to its continued presence in the community and its rich cultural and history often omitted from most history books. The museum allows individuals to experience just how much and how many African Americans contributed to the settlement and development of the Western United States. The mural of Dr. Justina Lorena Ford denotes one of the many untold stories of commitment and sacrifices 
made by African Americans in Denver and the West. I would like the Ford babies, if you are able, to stand or wave. <laughs> now I would like to introduce uh, Patrina, Paterina uh, Petri, and I apologize if I... Oh, you did it. You did so good. <laughs> Can oh, we give another round you. of applause? That was amazing. <laughs> First of all, I just want to thank everyone so much for your kindness and letting us be a part of this at U.S. Bank. On behalf of U.S. Bank, I just want to say... Gosh, it's just a tremendous amount of pride I have in my heart to see all of you here. A lot of pride for this mural on the wall. It is absolutely beautiful. And it's just the thing that we need for this community during this time right now, isn't it? Yes. Dr. Ford dedicated her life to help people have medical access, people that didn't have a lot of money. And U.S. Bank want wants to be a part of that type of legacy, wants to be a part of that type of memory. And I haven't got a chance to meet a lot of you guys, which I hope I get to shake a whole bunch of hands. Um, but I'm new to Denver, and when I first came here, I came to the Five Points branch, and they invited me to the Juneteenth Parade, and they gave me tennis shoes to walk in that parade. <laughs> in Five Points, when I got to the parade, I had vendors and people just telling me so much about the spirit and the community and the family of Five Points. It was absolutely fabulous for me. They kept telling me, eat at this booth, go to this business. And I ate a lot that day, but the, the thing for me that was so spectacular is my daughter was walking in that parade for me, with me. My daughter is eight years old right now. And what we didn't realize is we were walking in the spirit of what Justina, Dr. Justina Ford had provided for us that day. And I got a chance to tell that story to my daughter just last night. And it was just something for me that was so spectacular to be able to say it. And one of our tellers was actually uh, talking a little bit yesterday, or just a couple weeks ago, not yesterday. Seems like yesterday. She said, it feels like cheers around here. Everybody knows everybody. And so to be a part of that and to get an opportunity to have this legacy, it's just a lot of, a lot of pride for us. Um, and I would be remiss to just take a moment and recognize our branch manager who has been here for eight years in this community, Lanita. She is wearing her blue. She looks so good right now. Um, you know, for me, it's about our staff really being a part of the community and really getting an opportunity to ensure that Dr. Justina Ford's legacy is remembered in our branch, through our tellers, through our transactions, anything that we need to do to build relationships, that's our heart. So I just wanna say thank you to Kevin, Connect for Colorado. Yeah. Thank you to the mayor. I really appreciate yeah. just you being out here and really sending that message. Thank you so much to the Black American West Museum for all you do. And thank you for everyone who keeps this memory alive in your heart. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's, you know, I, I'm stubborn, so I'm going to try it one more time. Um, so uh, a couple of things before we get to the pageantry uh, that's here. I, I think what's really important, okay, Two things I think are, are important I want to convey. One, life is not accidental, right? You think of the path that Dr. Dr. Ford uh, represents and, and why we're all here today. And then you, you think of the fact that the mayor wasn't supposed to speak. I cajoled him into speaking. And the next thing you know, he just happens to be carrying the coin in his pocket. I mean, do you walk around? Mayor Hancock. Mayor Hancock, uh, De Denise, can I talk to the mayor for a second? I have a question. <laughs> See, I, I, I've been around here a little while, too. Uh, do you walk around normally with this coin in your pocket? I just, I'm just, the, the chance of this is it's not, it, just, it seems like it was predestined to happen this way. Yeah, uh, we keep them in the car. You keep one in the car? Okay, I'll take that. 
I would suggest you put another one in there. Put in the car because you never know when you're going to run into somebody. Well, I'm, see, it, this is the way it worked out. And so to have that announcement also be a part of what we're doing here today, I think is extremely important. It's something we should stop and think about and just absorb that a little bit to think about the impact this woman has had and, and continues to have to us and through us today. That's the importance of the Black America West Museum. That's the importance of the stories. Those, those stories represent lives. They represent struggles. They represent challenges that we need to be reminded of and tell our children about because life does not get easier. You just have to figure out how you're going to just continue to move through the challenges that you're presented. And so for me, I really appreciate everyone being here today. I, I appreciate there being not a, literally not a cloud in the sky. Uh, it, it, we couldn't have asked for better weather. I've been, in, I've been in the snow for the last three days, and so coming back here was just wonderful. Uh, so I, I really appreciate you all being here. I, I want to acknowledge uh, Paul Brooks in the Five Points Business Improvement District to help us identify the wall space uh, and contact connected us with the, the landowners. I, I want to thank Elvin Caldwell and the Thomas Bean Foundation, landlords of the building. Uh, again, thanking Daphne for and the Black America West for their continued dedication to these stories that are, I say are just so important. Uh, I want to thank Matt uh, Sansing, who couldn't be here today. Uh, but if you haven't looked at some of his other work, this is stunning. Uh, he's pretty good. I mean, we have, we have great artists in Denver. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but this, this, one, this one turned out really well. I'm really proud of, of how it turned out. And I, I again, want to thank uh, U.S. Bank. Uh, we couldn't have asked for a better partner. So, uh, Petrina, everyone, the whole staff here, we really appreciate it. And to be on this important building, I, I think, is also something that we, we just need to recognize. Um, just real quickly before we end, uh, I do want to thank Susan Burks and Dondre Mills who helped us pull all this fun stuff together. And, and, and I, do have, I do have staff members here with a Connect for Health Colorado staff wave their hands. There's a good number of them here. Uh, the work that we end up doing uh, during that very compressed time of open enrollment drives everybody a little crazy. Um, and so doing something like this where we can see our, our work and our effort be, being reflected in the communities that we serve uh, is just extremely important and, and it's, it's something that we treasure. So I just wanted to thank them for helping pull this together because uh, there's not a whole lot I do by myself and what I do by myself doesn't always turn out that great. So we always need help, right? That, that's, that's the way this world's supposed to work. So I want to thank the electeds again. Councilwoman Cedabaca, I really appreciate you being here. Uh, I know how important your community is uh, in your work that you do every day. So I just want to thank you for taking time out of your day to be here. And, and I appreciate the mayor allowing me to uh, cajole him into speaking uh, today. So, uh, but we were classmates and so that's a long story. Um, so I think we are ready to move to the ribbon cutting. On, on three, are you ready? They're big enough. Yeah. Close up. Close up. Two, three. Yeah. Yeah.